Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving the math problems out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 154 and today is our day number 50. Let's take a look at it. The bottom problem that you see there on page 154. It says on the lumber line shown above the tick marks are equally spaced. That's the key, key part. It, it, they are the tick mark the tick marks are equally spaced. That is the most important part here. So here, is, here are the marks. They give us a zero here. This is X. This is Y. And this is Z. Before you do any work at all, in a situation like this, it's always helpful to have some concrete numbers there. Instead of working in abstract terms, plug in some numbers here. Make, make something up here. If this is 0, let's make this as positive 5 and this is negative 5 because they are equally spaced. All the tick marks are equally spaced. So we're talking about a difference of 5. So if this is 5, this has got to be positive 10. Let's take a look at the first answer twice. x times y times x times y times z they tell us is less than 0. Let's see if it's true. Well, y we know is positive y is positive z we know is positive positive times positive plus positive x is negative x is negative so negative times positive times negative is going to be the whole thing is going to be negative which of course is less than zero so this is correct the first statement is true let's look at second statement second statement is where the th things get a little prickly which is why it's a good idea to plug in numbers so that you don't end up making careless mistakes. X, which in our case is negative 5, plus Z, which is our positive 10. A negative 5 and a positive 10 should give us positive 5. What does Y turn out to be? Ah, oh, it's positive 5. Voila, you see? So that is the correct answer. And it's much easier to see it if you have numbers, as I said, or well, as I keep repeating. Let's look at the third statement. So, so far the first statement works, second statement works. Let's look at the third statement. I need the room, so I'm going to raise it. Let's see if third statement is also true or not. Statement number C says y times y minus z is greater than 0. y minus z. Now listen carefully, okay? y minus z. You can put in numbers if you want, which I will, which I will also do in a second. But let's first talk, speak in terms of abstract in, in abstract terms. Y minus z. Y, as you can clearly see, is less than z. Therefore, a small number minus a large number. Y minus z is going to be a negative quantity. This is going to be a negative number. Z is a positive number. So a positive quantity times a negative quantity, which is what y minus z is going to be, a positive quantity times a negative quantity, we are told is greater than zero, it is not possible. A positive times a negative cannot be more than zero. Now we're going to do the same thing with numbers so that you can see it easily. So we can clearly see that this is nonsensical. Z in our case is positive 10. Y minus Z. Y is 5. Z is 10. As you can see, it's the same thing again. It's a negative quantity. Y minus Z is a negative quantity. 5 minus a 10 is going to be negative 5. A negative 5 times a positive 10 cannot be greater than 0. It cannot be. This is wrong. Statement C is wrong. So the correct answer choice, the answer, correct answer choices here are A and B. You must check mark both A and B in order for you to be able to get the full credit for the, for the, for the question. You, there is no such thing as partial credit in this exam. So if there are two right answers, and if you check mark one, you're not going to get half the credit. No, there is no such thing. Let's add two more statements to it. Okay? Why? For the fun of it. Yes, of course, fun. Let's have fun. Let's add two more. Here's your statement number D. Let's 
this added two more. A word that comes to my mind, I'm not sure if you're interested in learning this word, I'm not even sure if I ever covered it in my vocabulary lessons, and I'm not even sure how to spell it. And yet here I am looking for it, and the word that I'm looking for is exactly what would probably be an adjective to describe myself, because otherwise I wouldn't be doing this thing what I'm about to do there. The word is masochistic. I'm going to first spell it uh, but, uh, the way I think it should be spelled. And then the, I'm going to put it on the blackboard. It's a good word. Well, all the words that I come across to me are good words, so that's neither here nor there. There we go. The word is masochism. I have not covered it in the vocabulary uh, lessons. Uh, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, in addition to the math, in addition to the, in addition to the math video that you're watching right now, you will also find on my channel some vocabulary videos. And I was looking in my list here of the words that I've covered to see if uh, masochism, masochistic, is the word that I ever covered in my vocabulary videos. And it turns out that I have not. So I'm going to do it in the future. A masochistic person is somebody who lives for pleasure. A masochistic person is somebody who takes pleasure out of inflicting pain on himself or herself. So why two more? Let's do two more. Why? Because we are masochistic. x minus y equals 0. Is this statement true? x minus y equals 0. The reason I wanted to uh, uh, do this thing, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know why they did not put it there. This would have been a legitimate uh, answer choice to put in there. Because sometimes in a rush, people will, people will make a mistake. Look, people will say, well, x is the same distance from 0 as y. And therefore, in their rush, they will say, well, if you got same distance and if you're taking something away, equal amount, then of course, it's going to be 0. x minus x minus y must be 0 because it's the same distance from here to here. That is not true here. Watch. We're going to plug in number. Our x is negative 5 minus a y, which is a positive 5. So x minus y turns out to be a negative 10. It is not 0. This statement is false. Let's do one more. I should have given you a chance, a few seconds, to pause the video and do it yourself. Next time, if I keep on going, you pause the video yourself. x plus y equals to 0. Why don't you do this yourself for a second? Pause the video right now, do it yourself, let's see what you come up with. Just plug in numbers. And this actually is true. x, of course, you can see is negative 5 plus the y, which is a positive 5, and that does equal to 0. So that works. And of course, if I were writing the exam uh, questions, I wouldn't put both D and e in, e, e in the question. That would be silly. But D would have been a nice choice to put in in that, in that question. I do, not, I do not know why they didn't put it in there. They just left it at A, B, C. One more statement would have, would have done nicely. Anyway, I'm done with this question. I will see you tomorrow on day number 51 where we will start oh the hard questions what do you know where we will where, where we will start the core problems that you see beginning on page number 155 set number three which they are calling hard questions and the reason why they are calling hard is because guess what they are difficult for example the very first question that you see there on the next page 155 it was given when it was given in the real exam only 27 percent of the people got it right almost three quarters of the people got it wrong I'm talking about question number one on page 155, which I will do tomorrow, okay? Which we'll do tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye now.